Welcome to Rule of Thirds, an offshoot of our Screen Refresh podcast. Our goal every episode is to take a little break from watching and analyzing movies to dive headfirst into some nostalgia or just get a little creative. So every month, we select a different topic and create a top three list that may or may not be near and dear to each of our hearts. Shoot us a message on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Screen Refresh, or send an email to screenrefresh at gmail.com. Let us know what your top three are or suggest future topics. I'm your host, Tim, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Dean and Nick. Put it all on black. Hello there. And today we're going to be discussing our favorite or best fictional universes to live in, which was harder than I originally had in my head when I said that topic. I had to brainstorm with Laura, my wife, just like talking about universes. I was like, oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I had to like make a master list and I, you know, I'll have some choices when when the time comes to me. (laughs) And you always bust Dean's balls about making choices. There have been many a times we're like, Dean, then why did you pick it if you didn't know? <laughs> yeah, I I had one in my head that I was like, oh, without a doubt, this is going to be my number one. But then all of the rest of them, I was like, well, actually, no, that doesn't really fit. No, that wouldn't really work. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So without further ado, does anybody want to kick things off or I'll kick things off with number three? You go for I didn't it, take too. notes. I just wrote three titles down on my phone. It's rapid fire. It's a new era for me. I kept reciting the three in my head, and I can't remember the <laughs> third one. But my first one was Pokemon. I want to live in that Pokemon world. I want to be the very best, like no one ever was. To catch them is my real test. To train them is my cause. I thought somebody might pick Pokemon. I thought that would be, I feel like you guys would like, they love, you would love that. So did you start with your number one pick? No, it's just, it's a list oh, of so three. Oh, so it's not in order of importance. In no particular order. No, no particular okay. order. My choices, listener, are never in any particular order unless preface. Mine, mine especially for this one are not either. Then if that's the case, then if Nick, you're kicking it off with Pokemon, I will have to say number one on my list was Pokemon. Pokemon! Let's talk about Pokemon. So let's talk about Pokemon. Star Wars is not on my list, and I'm thinking about it, and it's that, what universe would you want to live in? I do not want to live in a tyrannical world held by, you know, governed by a uh, an empire that is genocidal and, like, all this crazy bad things that why would you want to live in that that's not a good (laughs) feeling to be in do you really think you're going to be one of the force (laughs) users no i want to go into the fields and catch a charmander and raise it and be my best friend does those odds are a lot closer to my level of uh probability than you know being the one in 10 million to use the force no 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 i i as a child i was always super mad at ash because you would be so hyped to be on time to get your first Pokemon. How could you oversleep? I don't. I know he threw the ball and thinking that that was a Pokeball and it was his alarm clock and he smashed it and he was late because of it. No, man. Like if that was me, I'd be so hyped. There's no way in hell I would have missed I that have first slept. day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Sleeping, sleeping can wait. Professor Oak would have walked outside and been like, "Well, what is this?" And he steps over me. What is the I mean, you say yes. Your chances of being a Jedi very slim to none. Can any? Or does everybody just a Pokemon trainer in the Pokemon world? Like, there's only well, there used to All only you have be, be 101, right? Mm-hmm. Was there literally? Sorry, was there 101 ever, or like 101 species? Or was it just like there's 101? That's it. There was never 101 unless you. There was, it started with 150. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I just had the. Yeah, obviously, I never played the game. Yeah. <laughs> My question was like, is it 150 species or is it 150? And that's it. Like, they're all the last of their kind. (laughs) 
but I wanted Pidgey. Too late. I caught him. <laughs> Corner the market on Pidgeys. I just didn't know. Like, that's that's my I, question. What's the answer? Do you know what's the answer? Oh yeah, there there was. I mean, it's 150 specific poker species wise. If you consider Ekans turns into Arbok and whatnot, then okay. And that's like yeah, one species. Then, okay, then there's less than 150 species, but there are 150 individual types, and okay. then there's a bunch of each. Okay, there's a so bunch. I mean, like a hundred different people can all have Butterfree, and it it doesn't matter. Okay, I mean, I know in the realm of the game, yes. I just mean like in the universe, if you were there, like could Ash yeah have in Pikachu universe and too. you could have Pikachu as well. Yep. Okay. A lot of the ones that I was thinking about, and this is why like it was the first one on my list in my head, is, okay, so the Marvel Universe or the DC Universe or like all of these other things, yeah, that's terrific. You're probably not going to be one of the people born with like, oh, I can shoot lasers out of my eyes. No, you're going to be some poor schlub who's like, yep, I still have to go to a 9 to 5, but also my house gets wrecked every couple of weeks because of Thanos coming in. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the other thing thinking about it. It's like, why on earth would I possibly pick a universe where like, yeah, I love Iron Man, I love Marvel, but I would never want to live in Marvel's New York City. No well, thanks. What about... I've seen jokes on people living there and getting like their car wrecked because the Hulk decided to use it as a shield. Yeah, I guess with the boys kind of makes you realize like, yeah, it could be scary living in a world <laughs> with people with powers. You don't know uh, mentally what's yeah. going to happen to them. I mean, th that was my, how influenced a lot of the picks that I'll go through tonight is a lot of the ones that immediately came to mind. I ended up shooting down because it's like, okay, yeah. So you, if you're one of the, the fraction of a percent born with XYZ or having this thing or whatever the case is, then yeah, that's going to be great. But also all of these shows and games and movies are based around like main characters who are that fraction of a percent. All the rest of us are just, just people. So it kind of ruins it. So I, I don't want to say any of them just in case they're on either of your lists, but definitely I would say without a doubt in my mind, Pokemon would be the number one. And then we'll I'll work my way back from there. Oh well, like so with Pokemon, you anybody can just like you, everybody's a trainer essentially. There are no civilians, or like, I mean, I guess if you don't want to be, yeah. There's people who choose not to be trainers, but for the most part, it's just like, there's, hey, there's you're not a ten big years old, you get your first Pokemon. Yeah, it's just go yeah. on the road, go be a Pokemon trainer. Like you get money from that, you can have a career from that, and it's so it's another attainable do whatever career. you want. <laughs> the anime is a better. Yeah, the anime is a better example of it because the video games are pretty shallow. Because at least in the anime, Ash wants to be the best, you know, Pokemon master. He wants to be the best trainer. Then he meets up with Brock and he wants to be the best breeder. And he wants to specifically breed Pokemon, take care of them, nurture them. Kind of more like, you know, Pokemon, Pokemon husbandry. husbandry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the options for what you can possibly do with them is endless. And then like the, um, some of the games, it just really hones in on the fact of like, I think sword and shield of just, or that's the movie, even detective Pikachu, just Pokemon living side by side with humanity, helping out doing certain jobs that humans can't do that they can do for us. It's a really awesome world. That's just like, man, I, I would love yeah. that. It's like, you don't even have to be a trainer. It's like, there's people that it's like, Oh, he's a carpenter and he just has a scyther who works with him and just like cuts logs and they work together. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's just you having a buddy. Yep. Squirtle squad being on the fire department. Like that's <laughs> sign me up. I would, I would be a Pokemon crossbreeder. I would try to figure out like fun new <laughs> breeds of Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there might be uh, some biological scientific a website challenges. <laughs> like a Brendel thing. It crawls out from like in your beakers and, Am I beautiful, Father? Or like just um, teacup sizes of some of your favorite favorite large Pokemon, you know, like a miniature horse <laughs> or potbelly pig. It's it's a unique job. <laughs> it's I don't know if it's a We're... niche that needs filling, but damn it, it's gonna get filled. In our fantasy world, within the fantasy world, it's happening. <laughs> well, uh, clearly you would be creating Mewtwo, so just like hipster designer Mew, Pokemon, Mew three and Mew four. <laughs> yeah. So I think that covers both of our pick then. Dean, what is what would your pick be for your universe? My universe. Well, 
I know we talked about how the Marvel Universe, you wouldn't want to be just a regular person and then there's maybe destruction happening. But if I could live in a universe that was just like this one, except it was possible to uncover mosquitoes trapped in amber and use the DNA inside of those mosquitoes to create real live dinosaurs. <laughs> I thought you were going to breed Pokemon. But <laughs> that too, I guess. <laughs> Yes, ancient Pokemon. No, but I would 100% want to live in the... Dress. Not to digress, but those are two Pokemon from the original set. That is exactly how they're made. Really? Yeah. What? Three. Three of them, technically. I was going to say, they had. They would have had to borrow from Crichton then at that point. I'm sure he... I mean, the concept is not Crichton's, but um, popularized for sure. But I would live in Jurassic Park. Not in Jurassic Park, but you know what I mean. <laughs> you would be one of the dinosaurs? I would. <laughs> like Richard Stanley on the set of Island of Dr. Moreau, <laughs> just with a dinosaur head just hiding out in the forest. <laughs> Hope they think I'm one of them. Yeah, he uh, he left the ride a couple days ago. No, but I know it's uh, just the real world with dinosaurs, but I mean, I've loved dinosaurs since I was a kid. Yeah, I would totally go to a real Jurassic Park, regardless of the risk. Well, then again, yeah. there wouldn't be a meta risk going into said park because no one would have made a movie about Jurassic Park if the, you know, the whole thing actually existed. And if it it's did true. have a, an issue like that, it would probably be. Although I feel like normal theme parks, when there's an issue, it's like, yeah, we closed that ride down for a bit, and then they just reopen, even if it's like, yep, killed three. So. In reality, but hey, in reality, but I listen, feel like Jurassic Park got... would just <laughs> it would like shut it would down for back. a weekend. Yeah, listen, it's yeah, it's dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, our reality: the Pirates of the Caribbean ride really did break down, and the pirates really did eat the tourists. I mean, in real life, Jurassic Park, it would have been like, oh my god, they're stock tanked for like three days because of all the deaths there and then you'd have everybody online being like buy the dip on jurassic park and then all of a sudden it would just like be back to normal within weeks that's exactly right i mean now that's something that anybody i think it just would be an amazing sight to behold and just seeing ancient beasts like that now my only thing as far as jurassic park is granted it would be amazing and I would absolutely want to go. I'm not concerned about the danger. I just know current theme parks without dinosaurs, if you want to get into that Star Wars, like, the with the hotel and the, the whole RPG thing and whatnot, it's like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and wait lists and things like that. Well, you're right. You can charge 10000 a day, you know, and people would pay it. <laughs> or have a coupon day or something. <laughs> <laughs> Because like, can you imagine what the cost and wait list would be to get into Jurassic Park? It would be like, oh, it's terrific. Well, the funny you thing be rich. is, is well, that's the funny thing. That's why they made the Indominance. Sales were tanking because no one cared anymore. So yeah, at first it was like, oh my god, they're releasing a, you know, a Struthiomimus. And then it's like, no one cares. It's a Stegosaur. whoop de doo <laughs> Oh. Which I still think is stupid, because it's just, this thing has never existed, and it's not like we're resurrecting an ancient horse that is no longer, you know, that's extinct. No one cares about that. It's a freaking dinosaur. How can you not want to see that? I, I don't care. The park would have been like 60 years old by that point. I'd still want to go. I never saw the dinosaur yet. I'd fly True. to see just a field of Gallimimus and be like, yep, I'm going. <laughs> we're going to see the Gallimimus. Yeah, for real. Until they flock that way. And you, you you can sprint with them if you pay extra. Um, <laughs> they just have a guy in one of those blow up T Rex outfits run behind them and <laughs> to herd them. Some high um, school kid who just needs the uh, the credit for the summer internship. I'm just doing my job, sir. <laughs> Two moving hurts. <laughs> well, the fan's not working again. Sweating my ass off. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, it's funny. How long would that last? Because then kids will be born and with dinosaurs in the world. And like how 
I mean, I guess there are certain breeds of animal in the world where you've never encountered and be like, oh, it'd be cool to see them in person one day. Would it just be like that for those kids? And amazing for the rest of us that know they're extinct? It would just turn into the same as like, oh, you get to go see a giraffe. It's like, yeah, I've never right. seen a giraffe. I guess it'd be cool. So it wouldn't last for everybody, but it would last for me. And that's all that matters in this fictional premise we've concocted. <laughs> Jurassic Park, I, I, I was thinking about that. And then just the whole, you know, it going terribly wrong thing kind of <laughs> deterred me a little bit. Yeah, how bad could it be? I guess we, we'll see in this next movie. But So that brings us to round two. So Tim... You're including Pokemon as your uh, your first one? Yeah. I figure it just makes sense to include it now round. and just shift it out of the order I had on my list. Rather than being like, hmm, mm, yes, Pokemon. And then get to my number one and be like, and Pokemon. So my second choice is Pokemon. <laughs> but the second generation. And it's going to be the video game instead of the uh, movie. No. My second one is a video game and it is actually the Warcraft universe. That was almost on my list. Yeah, very close to just your typical like sword and board medieval kind of thing, but it doesn't have the inclusion of other races. And I just love the War Warcraft lore that uh, I can totally see myself living in Stormwind, being just like a freaking horse caretaker and then making deliveries to Goldshire just down the hill kind of thing. I totally would do that. That was going to be my question. Like, okay, like, I think we're back to like, what are you going to do here in this world? Okay. If you'd be happy doing that, then great. You know, then one of the sister cities to the north receives a very bad shipment of grain, and then, you know, zombie outbreak <laughs> happens because of a scourge invasion, and that just requires a full, like, call to arms. I would enlist in the military, and then eventually I would go up to Northrend. I would probably die right before the cataclysm. <laughs> so that's kind of when the game went downhill. I would die in Goldshire, attacked by wolves. <laughs> My blacksmith apprentice, he worked for me for four days. I mean, it, that <laughs> when you put it that like it would be fun because it's like, yeah, it's your traditional like medieval setting, except there's also the fantastic element. There's also like magic and things like that that seems to mm -hmm. be widely used magic items. Yeah, I don't have to be one in a 10,000 in order to use the yeah. force. It's just, oh, you want to be a mage? You got to go to school. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you want this, like, magic wand or whatever it is? Like, just cough up the money. It's the same as, like, saving for, oh, man, I really wanted this console in high school. Okay, just get a part-time job. Just work for it. Yeah, really. And especially during classic times where, oh, you want a new ma uh, wand? That's going to be cheaper than your first horse. Yeah. Which is the equivalent of, like, do you need a new pen? All right, well, it's five bucks at the store, and then it's going to cost you about a thousand to get a car. Or with the amount of apprenticeships all of the different professions do, that it's just like, man, I just want to really learn how to make, like, I don't know, tinker and engineering. Cool, just go to Stormwind, go to the Dwarven District, learn how to be an engineer. Government? Yeah, I rewatched the Warcraft movie today, and I really love that first five minutes of the movie, just <laughs> seeing Stormwind in, in person. In live action form, not Stormwind, um, Ironforge. Stormwind was still impressive too. That's that's still my city of choice. But to see Ironforge in live action, I would totally want to be able to go there. Maybe not live there. I'm not. I've never been a dwarven guy. But to at least visit, I still think is a huge sight to see and totally worth at least once in a lifetime. Like if I had a choice between going to Isla Nublar for my birthday. Or go to Ironforge. I honestly wouldn't know which one would kind of would win in that con like in that thing, and if they would cost well, the plus same. The fact you, I feel <laughs> like it would be easier because you have the tram in Stormwind. I feel like it would be the equivalent of taking the Amtrak. If it would just be like, Basically. oh, I live in New York, I really want to visit Boston. Okay, you just buy a train ticket and it's go see it. Mm. How much is the train? How much is he making being a horse? A horse's. Uh patoot or whatever well thank thankfully it's free yeah oh, okay the tram is free also it just uh, takes about three minutes of real time but or five if you missed it i was picturing the world of warcraft movie trailer and then like when they always pop up like the quotes of people 
for the reviews. And then it's just like, Nick, I loved the first five minutes of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of it is definitely a movie, which maybe maybe then is arguable. We'll we'll get into the rest someday, but it's a movie made for no one. Yeah. It's like, imagine knowing Lord of the Rings of what it's capable of, and we start with the Silmarillion. It's like, mm. let's let's cut enough stuff out and kind of simplify it for people who aren't familiar with the property. But then also, let's try to throw, like, some winks and nods in here for people who are familiar, and it just ends up being, like, a, a weird mix of, who is this for? Or better yet, I think it's more like watching Ghostbusters, but instead of watching them learn to become ghostbusters it's them in their college years getting their diplomas and stuff <laughs> you know they'll eventually become <laughs> ghostbusters and they'll <laughs> kind of run out of money get kicked out of the, their school but it hasn't gotten to that point yet and the second they do that's when the movie ends and then no one goes to see it and then the sequel <laughs> ghostbusters the real movie that's when it would have come out but we never got to that point unfortunately we probably never will damn they just spent the whole movie like yeah. hanging out like in the town center like trying to crew up for a, a raid <laughs> yeah just in a nutshell it's just it's you have warcraft one two and three is the video games and number three is one of their best-selling games of all time and they decided to do a movie based on warcraft one that not as many people played so it's like yeah you're starting all of the lore right at the start of where the gameplay is, but at the same time, it's like no one really cares about this section of the uh, the plot because by the time it gets really interesting, technically all these characters are already dead, only because just that's much how, that's how much time has passed. Yeah, or right. they're like, oh, that old old man. It's like he's one of the ones from this one. Would you live in the live action movie world, but just a better, you know? doing away with what the movie is or just kind of your idealized version of these of warcraft yeah i would i think they did the movie justice enough that it looked good there wasn't any points where i'm like this isn't how it looks or any kind of like um shallow gripes against the movie because of visuals i thought it looked amazing yeah it was mainly it just came down to plot and pacing but like aesthetically yeah. it was it worked yep which i guess brings me to my next pick, which is... And what shall that be? Which is the Dark Souls <laughs> Elden Ring universe. What the fuck? Because again... Following my theme of you don't have to be born special or be rich. It's just you just have to be there. Like start off as level one just existing. I just am butt naked with a wooden club. And someday I will be <laughs> the king of the wizards with golden armor and a giant sword. Rise tarnished. <laughs> For you shall find your maiden. And if I die, I die. I just come back. I mean, the world is horrifying. It's terrible, but hey, so is ours. <laughs> they have a, a a turtle pope, and I pledge all of my faith to it. <laughs> it's true. I have yet to play the game. I mean, I don't know if I will. I, I don't want to get into that, but just meaning like, it, so it's just based on the fact that you can pull yourself up by the bootstraps and um, yeah, and get out of your naked club situation. Like it's it's horrifying of like all the the murder and the monsters and everything but it also it's yeah you just kind of build yourself up get good and then it it's kind of fun just adventuring and exploring it would be great if i didn't have a nine to five job of you just get up and it's like what do i do today oh i'm gonna go to town and get supplies and then i'm gonna like explore this dungeon and then kill whatever is at the end of it, and then I get some treasure and call it a day. Yeah, whatever you kill, you keep, you know? Yeah. It works. <laughs> which, which I mean, I guess technically works in our world, too, just differently. Uh, if you get away with it, I guess <laughs> you keep it. Depends on how rich you are, I guess, in some, in some ways. Try finger. <laughs> Buckle. <laughs> Four. Night. <laughs> 
trying to think of my other favorite one. The, my, the one that actually got me to laugh out loud. There's a bunch of butterflies you can collect for part of crafting recipes. And someone just decided to put, is this a bird? <laughs> right in front of them. In relation to that meme that came around a long time ago. So yeah, I think Elden Ring and the the Dark Souls and all of that, while horrible, while dark, while miserable, it also has the capacity for you have just as much of a chance of being able to do cool stuff and explore and have some adventures as anybody else. I do like, too, that you can do whatever the hell you want in the game. Yeah. Because it starts off with you having the ability to choose your class, but it's really meaningless. It, you can literally learn anything you want, use anything you want, as long as you have the skills to do it. And if you don't, just level up enough that you, you do, and then you can start using it. It's a metaphor for real life. You choose your career in yeah. high school, and then you quickly abandon that, and then just go with whatever you have experience in. That little strikes <laughs> a little closer to home than I'd like. <laughs> too real <laughs> so yes that is the the elden ring dark souls universe as my next pick and who's next dean um it's just kind of hard to talk about because it's been a while since i read it i don't think you guys read it but um is it ender's game again it's ender's game it's jurassic more. park it's the sequel jurassic park 2 oh <laughs> it's Jurassic World. I'm just going to assume that's a kind of world I want to live in. It's the Fast and the Furious universe. Because you can start out as a DVD <laughs> thief <laughs> and become the government's top And you top too asset. can go to space. <laughs> the government's top uh, uh, government agent. Um, Wait, is that no, actually your pick? The little rusties. <laughs> it's not my pick, no. Um, yeah, no more fake Insane amount of luck. I was going to say, look just like me. <laughs> Cut uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The Galaxy from The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Not the galaxy far, far away, but just this one. That, that we sorry, in. it's fictional universes. I haven't Shit. been on Imager in a long time. And the other day I went on there and it was like a quick gif from the movie. And I forgot how much it had like random jokes in it where they use the improbability drive. And it's like, flawed. Am I a couch? <laughs> And they start screaming, but they're couches. And it's just so random. And I got a nice little laugh out of me. I completely forgot about that scene. Yeah, I mean, the movie was the movie wasn't bad. Like the book is just a really weird beast because it is so silly and so it's not just random for random sake. Like it's clever. Like it's Douglas. Well, it's Adams. like every kind of property. It's very difficult to translate a book or any medium into a different medium. And still retain all of its originality or, you know, there, there's never been a case where, like, a movie came out and they translated it. No, rather, a video game came out, they translated it into a movie and it was better or just as good as the original. And then, like, same thing with books going over to movies and just even audiobooks being read aloud can be different enough than just reading it off the page because you still miss out on certain things. Yeah, I mean, this, I describe this book as, like... It's like Monty Python. If Monty Python is best seen and heard, but if you had to read it, it's it's kind of like that's kind of like how Douglas Adams writes. It's um, I don't know. It's good satire and it's just kind of silly, witty British. I mean, it's like I've never actually tried reading it. It's good. I never heard it compared to like Monty Python, and I can see that. But at least from all the different um iterations that it's gone through because i know it's been a couple like state or like um radio plays and yeah it, it's maybe a little more um like life of brian satirical than it is say their sketch shows i mean it's just, just sticking with the monty python metaphor but in any case i mean earth gets blown up but they recreate earth like later in the other books 
Um, so, I mean, you're jet setting around the universe, and it's just, it doesn't seem like too dangerous for the most part, and it's just, uh, just more of like a fun, easy to explore kind of galaxy where you're not really in a whole lot of danger. And now, can anyone explore the galaxy, or do you have to specifically be part of that group? I mean, I guess, I mean, Arthur, the main character, wasn't anybody particular he had he befriended an alien on earth and that was but he didn't know that no he didn't until the world was ending (laughs) and then (laughs) it was so by chance um they hitchhiked a ride and um that just kind of started their adventure he wasn't anybody particular so you could fall your way into an adventure sure around the galaxy (laughs) that's not the first time that uh uh martin freeman has done that (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well maybe it was the first time but it wasn't the last yeah don't forget your towel that's the most important thing you can have in the in the universe very trusty tool you can fly too he eventually learns how to fly <laughs> he, he, they, Douglas Adams writes that I think he was like fall, or Arthur was like falling at some point and you just kind of have to miss the ground like you just have to <laughs> that was like kind of the key to flying um, you just gotta kind of miss. That's the most Buzz Lightyear way of explaining it. Just don't hit the ground. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Flying's easy. Now, what if I was one of the people in that universe on the Earth when it got destroyed the first time? Do I still get I to hitchhike? Come, I think you come back. Oh. Later on. Yeah. Not it turns out deal. Earth was like a Earth was like a computer sim- simulation, like experiment run by like mice. So I think they just like did it all again. <laughs> okay. It's a really Is long. Is that the equivalent experiment. of just like Windows crashing and yeah. just like restarting the computer? I mean, it's probably because they always hibernate Earth, but they never actually shut it down. Right. That's I mean, bad. it was blown to smithereens by the oh, I forget their name, the alien, the aliens who read bad poetry. But yeah, you can come. Yeah, you'll you'll be back. Like I, I guess you'll have the same memories and experiences too. Yeah, you'll be fine. But would I have memories of being destroyed? How does that change a man? Yeah. Yes. But not painful. <laughs> it might be an existential like crisis that you face, but hey, you're alive. Hey, don't we all? And they go to the uh, restaurant at the end of the galaxy? End of the, end of the universe, sorry. Why has nobody opened that up as an actual restaurant? I don't know. They should. Is every... Is every thing invented in a book like copywritten by that author at that point i don't know you just call your restaurant the the inn at the prancing sure pony someone, like who's gonna stop you i'm sure someone has and, and there's always that drink too that's that's popular by it like the gargle blaster or something <laughs> oh yeah yep that one i'm not familiar with <laughs> but i'll google it the that's a uh, galactic gargle blaster that's it yeah Oh, in the book that you get the oh yeah, there's the book right, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the actual book in the universe. It's like a digital book, and it literally will tell you about anything that exists. It's a really good knowledge base. I mean, even more so than the phones in our pocket. Like it really knows its stuff. Yeah, but is it better than a fifty sports almanac? Yes. Oh, okay. This one's like imagine a Pokedex, but <laughs> for what you should and shouldn't do in the galaxy. <laughs> yeah yeah well duh yeah hitchhike across the galaxy yeah anybody can do it if you're a hitchhiker there's nothing stopping you might have clever ways to make money but i i support it then there's an infinite amount of uh jobs out there nothing on this planet go to the next planet yeah like space travel whimsy flying like why wouldn't you want to go sometimes death <laughs> you step onto the road and if you don't keep your feet there's no knowing where you might be swept off to it's true. No more mixing books. That's it. The Hitchhiker's Guide. I should read that at one point in my life. You guys should. It's a good series. I've always heard great things. It's a good yeah. series. It's not just the one book. You know. I will get it via Audible for while I'm traveling. You won't, you won't do it. I will. <laughs> I'll prove it to you. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you in three months and see where we're at. My third choice maybe should have started with because it's not nearly as uh cool as the other two but um after close consideration i've decided i want to live in the same universe as the fifth element 
250 years into the future. Major Dallas, you've been selected for a mission of the utmost importance. What mission? Hold on! The race to save the human race is in the hands of one man. You gonna play it hard? Let's play it hard. Bruce Willis. We're sending somebody in to negotiate! Anybody else want to negotiate? The Fifth Element, rated PG-13. Pretty cool, oh, though. Yeah. It's a very just, uh, you know, it's it's not as bad as Marvel New York City or DC Gotham. But, you know, it's, it's, it's got a lot of crazy stuff going on. There's aliens and, you know, like, uh, you know, golden menus from McDonald's and just like Flossed in Paradise. I totally would. That, that's cool. Blava Laguna. I've, I'm there. <laughs> yeah. I think because it's a case of a universe like that, you don't even need to be, oh, the a fraction of the percent that happens to it's just uh, just kind of cool. I would just work a nine to five and just exist there, and it would just probably yeah, be just, interesting. Yeah. That guy who runs the the flying like Chinese <laughs> Chinese food uh, stand yeah. that comes to Bruce Willis's window, just like <laughs> make it for somebody onto the next like house house call. House call made to order, like right at your window. Hi, Mr. Dallas. Ah, good fortune for you. Keep me your good luck. Yeah, sure. Hi. <laughs> yeah. I always thought that was cool. It's like a reverse drive through It's a drive-by. <laughs> it's good in this universe. Yeah, instead of bullets, it's wontons. I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't either. <laughs> <laughs> Do the wontons come out of a gun? <laughs> homing homing straight to your mouth i mean the only thing that would be unfortunate is like if they don't take card and it's like cash only and i'm like uh, do you have an atm he's like i don't know do you and then leaves <laughs> it's your house son of a bitch <laughs> i mean at, at that point you just i don't know vandalize the property i'll never eat here Fly again it's, it's your house <laughs> okay bye okay bye <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was really leaning towards like some sort of space one as far as all of this and i didn't know which one i really wanted to land on and i ended up not including any of them but i think that would have been a cool one i really wanted to do like star wars or harry potter and i think this is the closest i'll get to star wars because the new york city in this is as close to coruscant as you can possibly get yeah and i just feel this one's a little bit safer because i trust you know president tiny versus uh um you know darth vader at the helm yeah i feel like you can just have a a more normal existence in the universe as opposed to like getting drafted into the rebellion or having to deal with all sorts of other stuff going on would you want to live in a world where debo is elected president yeah. yes okay <laughs> okay were you expecting a different yeah. answer so <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, like, yeah, oh, I want to join the rebellion. It there's never any uplifting stories on why those people join the rebellion. You know, these are literal guerrilla fighters because the tyrannical government has killed their family. So it's it is heartbreaking to hear what they have to say as the reasons why they're joining the empire. And I don't really want to live in that world. No thanks. Well, I mean, also for the fact that it's like if your town isn't overrun and like destroyed or. Oh, so you join the rebellion. You're going to be an X-wing pilot. That's great. Maybe a handful of them happen to be the ones who like took down the Death Star. A lot of people probably just ended up hitting into the side of the building and exploding. <laughs> yeah, 36, 36 ships attacked the Death Star. The first one. Guess how many came back? Three. Yeah. Wait, was it? <laughs> Te- yeah. Luke, Wedge, and um. Han. Technically, too, because Han didn't go with them to the Death Star. He kind of showed up at the last minute. But yeah, out of the 36 different ships, only two of those original ships came back. Everybody else died. Because Those are not good odds. Because who was, um, oh god, what was his name? Pork something or something like Porky? that? Porky? Por- Porkins. Porkins? Porkins. Did Porkins yeah. die? You, you watched him die on film. <laughs> oh. For some reason, I... You all right? No, I got it. I'm all right. Are you sure? Eject. No, I got it. I'm all right. I'm all right. He died in the... He died. That was him actually dying. (laughs) Yeah. George Lucas walks in and just puts a gun to his head. (laughs) 
<laughs> Sets these, he set the cockpit on fire. Yeah, George was just running the uh, the camera all day, and it was actually uh, Hayden. Just he decided to kill all those little kids on his own, and just George was filming, so he just kept it in the movie. <laughs> There's so many of them. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that that was. I was originally leaning space wise, and I was going to say Cowboy Bebop, just because you don't even like you can be a bounty hunter. But also, you can just kind of kick around and just explore space. It seems like people would get off world a lot anyway, so kind of cool. I like that universe too. That's your that's your number third choice. Uh, I it, it wasn't my number third choice. I was just saying I had a bunch of space ones in mind of Cowboy Bebop. That's and, that is a good one because Cowboy Bebop and Outlaw Star were both on my list for a bit um, between the two of them before I dropped them off. But my my actual pick, because Pokemon was supposed to be my number one, this was going to be my number two, is Sword Art Online. I almost I almost put the Matrix online. But at the same time, I'm like, uh, I don't think so. But I just want the because I did the Matrix part. <laughs> yeah, why would you live in the Matrix yeah. world if you don't want to live in the Star Wars universe? <laughs> well, because one is clearly fake. Oh, you mean just literally you just stay in the Matrix? Yeah. Okay. You, you, you oh, like wake yeah. up covered in goo, and you're like Put me back in. <laughs> Excuse me, my pot opened. <laughs> yes, robots, put me back in. <laughs> What did you so Tim? You said what online? I don't think I've ever heard of it. Sword Art Online. Uh, it's a manga and anime that I mean, you can probably it's on now. Everybody can see it on like Netflix and whatnot. But the the whole thing in the universe is they have like the super advanced VR headsets called like Full Dive or whatever it is, where it pops you into the world of whatever the game is but it's realistic to the point where it's you can feel and smell and touch and taste and all these different things and granted at the beginning of yeah it's like ready player one meets the matrix yeah because at the beginning of the series it's a case of like this the whole debacle of the creator of this like sword and sorcery game traps everybody inside and if they try to forcibly disconnect like somebody pulls their headset off they die but i mean other than that it's kind of cool of just it's not anything crazy that it's oh only the rich kids can afford the full dive vr headsets it's like no just like a bunch of different people have them so you can just kind of dip into the world whenever you want normally and it's yep i'm just going to there were people in the game that weren't adventuring it was just no i just set up shop i'm just a blacksmith now people just bring me stuff and i just turn it into things or like yep i just decided i'm gonna run it in in here that's it I if we had the option for that VR capability, I I wouldn't be here. I would just <laughs> stay in there. If I had the choice to plug into the Matrix and be a battery for the rest of my life, I totally would. Yeah. But something more than just the current life. Like I would get all the special bonus stuff along with it for being in the Matrix, not like you get to pretty much live out your whole life, but you're still a you're now a battery. In reality, you're just in a simulation kind of thing like no I'd, I'd rather be in like sword art online and be the battery yeah it's like let, let me go learn spells and get stuff and learn abilities and level up and all these things and have some adventures rather than well neo you're in the matrix and you still have an office job yeah no thanks i mean granted like if you unlock the matrix right great. the whole idea yes. of like hey we're just gonna port kung fu into your head congratulations you now know yeah. it that's why i kind of wanted or is thinking of leaning toward the matrix because i love that capability i mean it's just like i always wanted to play piano you can now yeah like uh i'm gonna learn jujitsu and the guy just like winks at him as he hits the upload button like that's that's fucking cool and yeah, yeah. video games can do that too i just imagine you finding like a spell book that teaches you how to do you know um you know, firebolt and then you just you click the, you know, you touch the thing in the game and boom, you now know how to do it. But. Yeah. Or like Trinity, I think it was Trinity in the helicopter. And she's like, I need to know how to fly a whatever. And he's like working on it. There you go. I guess you would just 
um, run into the the age old danger. Is it an age old question? Of like just the meaning of life. Like, well, what am I doing at this point? I can have anything I want. <laughs> I wonder how long it would last. Oh, it would be definitely would be fun for a little while. I just you'd I'd wonder at some point, like, well, just kill me now. I'm like, I'm done. I've done everything I could ever wanted to do. <laughs> I mean not being a batter anymore. I feel like the fact that there are people still playing games like Minecraft or GTA 5 or like online or all of these things that it's at this point you had to have done everything you can possibly do and you're still doing it. <laughs> I think they'd get some some hours out of the matrix. Oh yeah, I mean yes, years even, years and years. Yeah. Maybe just a, maybe just a lifetime's worth enough, maybe yeah. All you were going to live anyway, might as well have superpowers. Yeah. And then at the end of it, I get bored and I'm like, okay, guys, I'll work as an agent. Let me know. I'll just drop in <laughs> randomly and just beat up some other people. Get back in your battery goo. Dodge this. <laughs> get back in your goo. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Robots, my goo tastes funny. <laughs> you pizza flavored goo. Tostitos goo. I feel like that would be like an idiocracy product. <laughs> yeah. Now, Tostitos go <laughs> pizza and Cool Ranch. So that is Sword Art Online. It's uh, it's worth checking out, if nothing else, just for the concept. Um, and I would definitely want to live there. All right, I'm going to buy Sword Art Online. I mean, for that matter, it's similar to, I think Ready Player One would be a cooler universe internally like inside Red player one because it's all these like anything you can think of pop culture wise but outside of the universe seemed pretty dire yeah that kind of sucks. that's why it wasn't on my list because i'm like yeah but that means i'm like yeah cool i'll jack out of ready player one or jack out of the oasis and then i'm stuck living in like a trailer on top of another trailer in some like slum somewhere a lot of Ready Player One had loopholes on how the in-game currency was worth more than the actual dollar. And that was just kind of weird, because you can just go on a quest and become a millionaire overnight. Yeah. I didn't watch Sword Art Online long enough, but I think the game of Sword Art might have been a lot better. Ready Player One was just Second Life, but in VR. Yeah. Dean, did we buy you enough time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I decided I would. Is that what you were doing? <laughs> I mean, we're breezing through this, and you're the last call, so we still got 40 minutes of banter. Let's banter it up. I think we're about 15 Make minutes. Make it a log one. 15 minutes in here. So, as if you've listened, you might know that I collect toys. I want to live as a toy in Toy Story. No. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> I want to be Just Michelangelo, but figure. as a toy. Play with me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to a place where I don't have to grow up and I can just hang out with my friends and fly with happy memories. Wanna, and you, What? I was about to joke, but I didn't know you were actually going yeah, for I'm it. I'm going for it. And eat invisible food and throw it at my friends. Yeah, let's go to Neverland. I'm not, I'm not growing up. I'm going to Neverland. I'll joke all day about that, but honestly, that food, that banquet, I wanted that that multicolored whatever they were throwing at. I <laughs> they wanted just that. they just ate piles and piles of icing. Um, <laughs> that's yeah. all they subsided on. But I think in Neverland this sounds harrowing. I think. <laughs> I think you know, it never it's not lived. that they didn't grow up. It's because Peter killed them when they would age out. <laughs> Is that the dark truth and like the real story? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Peter had like an affliction where he, like he looked younger, but he was like actually like seventy two. He just killed all the real boys <laughs> once they hit eighteen. Their eighteenth birthday, they died. Once they were old enough to be like, Peter, you haven't aged. <laughs> Isn't that the dark theory on Captain Hook always wanting to attack Peter Pan because he was basically kidnapping kids and forcing them to never age? That'd be a great I like alternate so. like version of that movie. That would be awesome. Yeah, that's like one of the, the dark theories about all of it. No, but yeah, seriously. 
I wouldn't hang out in Never Neverland because it just is like all the time skateboard party, just hanging out with the boys, bang a ring. I mean, dissing contests. <laughs> well, yeah, dissing contests. <laughs> There's a cool, there's a pirate ship where I guess you can kind of get away with hanging out. Uh, and go murder some pirates every now and then. And poor. On a whim. Unless you screw up and you get sent to the boo box. Yeah. With <laughs> scorpions. That was Glenn Close. Yeah. I mean, I almost was going to say the Mushroom Kingdom too. I mean, I was like, that's just such a happy place that I think it'd be chill to live in the Mushroom <laughs> Which Kingdom. Which one though? <laughs> Dino Hatton Mushroom Kingdom or the actual real <laughs> You know that you travel by pipe, um, friends with toadstools. There's dinosaurs in that world too. I mean you could get a twofer there. Dinosaur <laughs> really, really get some bang Koopa, for your buck. Turtles. Yeah, a, a mushroom kingdom neverland hybrid. I think I like I mean, places where you can if fly. If you chose the Matrix, I think you can get it anyway. <laughs> Matrix is a cop out. You can load whatever you want as long as you're a programmer, <laughs> which you can download into your brain anyway. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, then the Matrix Sword Art Ready Player One universe would be the the win all because it's you could just do whatever you it's want. True. Yeah, you want to be that Jedi fighting Goombas, riding your Yoshi into a <laughs> battle against you know the Lich King. <laughs> Done. What would be like the number one? Say Ready Player One was real. Like, what? What's like the the avatar that like you're gonna see like every day? Like ten of them. Like who's who is the tracer from Overwatch? <laughs> yeah, Overwatch is probably a good one. Tracer. It'll be I'm so sick of that one. Homer Simpson. Homer's. Yeah, I feel maybe. like you'll see a thousand Homer's walking around. Mm. Lots of Mortal Kombat or dudes. Goku scorpions. Goku for sure. I was trying to think of generation two. I guess everybody. I guess in Ready Player One, literally, like old people play it too. So it'll just be the entire starting lineup of the '93 Bulls, (laughs) the dream, the Olympic dream team from the '90s. (laughs) Just all of them collectively. (laughs) You just have to like physically operate every person. I would just be a guy with like Affliction or Ed Hardy, Ed Hardy gear. The best version of myself. Um, yeah, Neverland. I'm going to Neverland. I'm playing with my toys. I already buy them, so it'll be more acceptable to play with them there in Neverland. I'm not growing up. Um, but can I go there as a 35 year old? <laughs> what? What? You, you wouldn't have access to them. I mean, because they don't just like pop out and pop back in, right? They like mean, they like, don't leave if Neverland I was... and go to like a Target and then go back, right? Well, I guess I, you know, I'd have to make them out of wood. I'd whittle some. That sounds sad. <laughs> <laughs> Dean but the, can li- but the never grows old. <laughs> he never grows old and lives forever in Neverland, whittling himself toys out of wood to play with to keep him company. <laughs> Wait, there's hey, fuck capitalism. He's going for it himself. <laughs> skateboarding my own with a Leonardo. Skateboard he doesn't have. Hey, there's because he has to whittle that too. Somebody already did. No, they're already there. We bought them from the pirates. <laughs> See, only only if you end up stealing a kid into Neverland who happens to also like <laughs> steal Bart Simpson and That's brings the his dark skateboard. Secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's that they're not pulling kids in to join Neverland because, like, <laughs> join us. It's like you have things we want that we can't get. <laughs> it's like uh, uh, from Dusk Till Dawn, like how the vampires trap those truckers and just raid their raid the load that they're carrying just like just Just like a a kid in the real world finds like a stack of playboys and all of a sudden you see the pirate ship just coming up outside it looks like you should join our crew oh go spit my pepsi everywhere (laughs) be sure to bring all those though oh you know i haven't there's only two exposures of peter pan that i've had throughout my life and that's Excuse the robin me? williams one oh. and then oh don't that's a well taken fruit <laughs> and um there's the peter pan with robin williams and then obviously the disney one but i did not see the one where wasn't hugh jackman captain hook yeah 
That was was he? Ca- he was Captain Hook. He was. Hook. Oh, okay. Or mm, actually, no. Wait, hold up. I he don't think Geppetto. he was. Wait, wait what? <laughs> if if I remember, I saw it once. I think he wasn't Captain Hook. He was another pirate because I think Garrett Headland... Long John Silver. <laughs> Because I think Garrett Headland or somebody was like one of the the people who joins up with Pan and is a friend of his, and I think he turns out to be like a young Hook. Don't quote uh, me on it. It's been I haven't seen it oh, since. Oh, Pan, it came out. the movie Pan, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jackman plays yeah, Edward Blackbeard. Teach. Okay, and you're so, right. Yeah, Garrett so Headland he, is a young Hook. I just remember it was like a weird Knight's Tale situation of. They all the pirates come out and they do this giant like epic musical number of like a pirate version of "Smells Like Teen Spirit" by Nirvana. <laughs> That's weird. Pirate remix. I have to Google that segment later. Yeah. Um. So I think there are like two or three other iterations of Peter Pan, but I don't really remember or watched any of those. Just the the Robin Williams one had the bigger impact on me compared to the. Because I grew up with the Disney one, and, you know, that one was great for what it was, but I don't think there was any other one at the time except for, I think, the stage play. Yeah, because there was another, like, a early to mid-2000 Peter Pan. I forgot the name of it. It might have just been called Neverland. But um, but I, I don't remember anything about it. I just remember seeing the trailer before a movie when we went to the theaters, and it was just like, you see the ship floating through the city streets. And I was like, oh, that looks amazing. And then I just never... That was the extent <laughs> in and out of my head. Yeah, because the one I'm thinking of is the one that has um, Mary Martin as Peter Pan. Oh, oh, yeah, I think that's the, the stage play, right? Yeah. Oh, and there's also another one with Kathy Rigby. Yeah, I feel like there are so many pans that just fly under the radar. There was Andy Serkis's Peter Pan movie. I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> He's, he's oh, okay. book. Does he, he play the crocodile? <laughs> he plays everyone. <laughs> Dean's pick was he wants to whittle friends out of wood <laughs> in the forest alone with children who only eat icing For eternity. and get kidnapped by Don't pirates. make fun of him. That was a great choice. That was a great <laughs> choice. And a very clever one. I did not expect that one from Dean. That was good. Oh, I liked it. God. <laughs> Child at heart. You definitely deserve to go to Neverland. Dean, why wait until Neverland to hang out with your friends? You can do that now. Yeah, but we're going to... Hang out with us. Get old get old and die. You, maybe. We don't have to think about Whatever that. Whatever happened to Michael Jackson's <laughs> Neverland? <laughs> Neverland Ranch? Did they Did they close that? Yeah. Did they... Like, what happened to they that? They sold the roller no coasters? Idea. I have no idea. Some it Definitely some eccentric million. person bought that. 22 million pounds. Pounds? Where was ne- it? Was I thought Neverland Ranch was in the U.S. It is. Well, this article, I guess, is oh. smoothradio.com, but it the uh, symbol for it is the pound symbol for the. Maybe they just had money. to put it. But then, like you scroll down a little bit, and then it shows million has been bought by businessman Ron Burkle for just twenty-two million dollars. But what does the estate look like now? He just bulldozed it. It's kind of weird because it looks like the entrance to Disney World. It's the exact same. You just put up cardboard cutouts of Michael all over the place. But not like out in the open. It's like around trees, around in, corners. So it's like open, no matter where a, you are, you're being watched. Open a closet door. <laughs> well, like like Zebo from uh, the Are You Afraid of the Dark episode? <laughs> you just open a door and it's just like... <laughs> Wait, did he actually copy from the Disney? Like, that pictures? looks exactly the same, doesn't it? Sorry, I'm seeing that picture too. It looks like the facade of Disney somewhat. Or like that first part of the inside of Disney. Yeah. In any case. iPad for time listeners. So that's, that's Neverland. <laughs> and extra. And more. And now all of We're our still... other picks. And now all of our honorable mentions. You want to talk about Batman? I mean, it's either your Batman or you end up as you just mean, somebody in Gotham who <laughs> gets terrorized. I think you just means the movie. Oh, oh, the Batman. The Batman. We could. And we got 25 minutes to spare. 20 minutes to give Dean the five minutes of like, and that's it, gang, for Rule of Thirds. It was nice to see Andy Circus in a role that didn't involve him pretending to be a gorilla or being on all fours or doing some kind of stupid voice. 
it, it's nice to see him like as great as he is at doing all of the the motion capture acting it's nice just seeing him just acting outside of yeah that. <laughs> it's like all right andy you're gonna be a human butler <laughs> What if they motion capped him and then he was just a slightly different English butler? Michael Go. <laughs> I was gonna say he did the mo cap out of the suit. <laughs> he did the mocap for Colin Farrell's penguin. I mean, I feel like it's the equivalent of us wanting to be in the Matrix goo. He's they take him out and he's just like, put me back in the mocap suit. <laughs> Wait, isn't John isn't Andy Circus then um Johnny Golfball? So is that his name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we call them Johnny Golf Balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Sorry. Johnny Golf Balls or like Tony Golf Balls. Yeah, <laughs> that's Andy Circus. Sorry to digress. Was was that from the last episode? <laughs> yeah. If you don't understand that joke, go back to whenever we made it. You do the legwork. Let me know because I missed the joke too. I th- I think it was um. By the time this gets released, people will have listened to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode, because I think we talk about oh, the motion capture them. suits that would probably that's... be used now. Yeah. At one point, I thought Harry Potter, even though I'm not a big Harry Potter fan, because I'm like, who doesn't want to go to wizarding school? And then I was like, yeah, but my luck, I would be born a muggle. And it's just, no, I have to lead a normal life while everyone else like is off doing wizard stuff. Exactly. And that's the same thing with Star Wars. It's just, it's not something that I want to gamble on, and it just wouldn't be fun being like, you know, you roll the die and it doesn't work out. In our choices, I mean, we are the, again, you're, you're, you're forcing this thing on where, like, we're probably not even going to be, like, important. I'm like, well, we could be, if that's the. Yeah, I want to go into the Matrix. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not thinking of myself as the one. I'm thinking about, like, that one guy in the coffee shop that turns into an agent. <laughs> He's not dead willing forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nick, you're late to work again. You would not believe what happened at the coffee shop. <laughs> uh, I had a computer program forcibly take over my body. I had to chase around a hacker. I uh, flew a helicopter at one point, and then I got <laughs> shot in the head. And now I'm here. <laughs> I will use PTO for the morning I missed. <laughs> yeah i mean i think that's what i based all of my stuff on is if i wasn't one of the lucky ones in these universes what would be my normal life and it's like okay so the ones i thought about it's like sword art pokemon like all of that it's yeah i guess it doesn't that matter i don't need luck on my side it's just like yeah regardless i just get to do what i want and the mushroom kingdom and neverland and the mushroom kingdom and neverland <laughs> true I mean, those are, it's the same thing. Those are picks that it's like, regardless of how you land, it's just, you have two options. You're either part of the Lost Boys or you end up and never land as a pirate. Yeah, I guess you'd be a smelly pirate. Yeah, but I mean, you get to (laughs) go around on a pirate ship and get beat up by kids, I guess, (laughs) who never age. Right. So they just get, they stay the same look while they get meaner and more twisted over the years. Until they're just a bundle of frustrated nerves that they just beat the stuff out of every pirate they come across because they don't know how to handle their feelings. Because they've been 14 for 45 years. They don't have parents through or puberty. I wonder if eventually they age out and they become pirates. I don't know. Yeah. What if it's not, like there's a agreement. lot of interesting it's side like, stories you can explore there. It's like the day happens and Peter's like, I'm sorry, it's time for you to go. And like Hook shows up and they have the handshake and it's like, okay, well, welcome aboard. It's like having the <laughs> ring all your life and then finally you get rid of it and you age overnight. <laughs> he just brings you back to mainland and then it's just Captain Hook waiting for you because by the time you get there, you aged 40 years. <laughs> no, what w- How terrible would it be, though, if you're like, oh, I'm too old, I have to become a pirate. You become a pirate, and then the very next day, all of your friends from the Lost Boys show up and just beat the shit out of you on a pirate ship. (laughs) They're like, oh, great to see you. Sorry, but you know how things are. (laughs) No hard feelings, eh? (laughs) It's it's like that parable about the scorpion and the frog. You know the one. Well, time to go. (laughs) Your time is up, old man. (laughs) The future is now. 
<laughs> so I feel like Neverland is somehow the one that we can get hours and hours out of here. <laughs> I'm, I'm for it. I'm all for it. Yeah, I didn't think that simple of a choice would uh, spawn something, but... I appreciate it. <laughs> nice to see one of us still has our innocence. I like to think so. Or pretend, anyway. What's Tinkerbell's involvement with all of that? Doesn't she have, like, a whole... Ra- There's a whole race of fairies, or no? It's just... I mean, tink. in the in the made-for-DVD and made-for-streaming like movies, there's a bunch of different fairies in the Tinkerbell fandom canon but it's like we never see them in peter pan right the disney one yeah so it's like are there a bunch of them are there multiple sets of lost boys are there other people out there because i think in the i'm trying to remember i don't think in the movie the cartoon but i think in like a book or something that there was another group because there was the other girl tiger lily or something like that Tiger Lily. I'm not I'm not well versed in my Peter Pan. Also the way that that microphone is, it looks like Dean just has like a bur- big surge tanky in beard. <laughs> like you should be singing for system. <laughs> I you wanted to. Um <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say that like a ventriloquist dummy? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Neverland is like a the Matrix. Like, there have been many pans. And the island just keeps recycling itself. Okay, gang, that wraps up another episode of Rule of Thirds, and we'd like to thank you for coming along on the ride and discussing our favorite childhood cartoons. That is a list for a different day. For the ride and discussing our favorite fictional universes to live in. As always, you can reach us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Screen Refresh, or shoot an email to ScreenRefresh at gmail.com. Let us know what your top three would be, or if you have any topics you want to hear us discuss. That's it for us. So for Nick and Dean, this is Tim. Have a great week and catch us next on Screen Refresh, the first Monday of the month. Why'd you leave the kids up on the table? Here you go, create another table. You wanted to. Grab a brush and put a little makeup. You wanted to. I just got the baby with the shake-up. You wanted to.